All right, so quick update for you guys. Starting here on Main Street, we have all preparations underway for 4th of July holiday. I think they put this up starting um, starting around Memorial Day weekend, but they added a couple more as we get closer to the 4th of July holiday. Looking forward to 4th of July fireworks, honestly. It's been a while since I've done it, so I'd like to do it again this year if I could. So another change over here in Tomorrowland is going to be um, these new planners. So these were kind of grass placeholders that were in place until they made the brand new entrance that they had teased way back in, I think, 2018 or 2019. The signage is right over there across the way. Um, and I'll go show you that again over in just a second here. But they actually took out all the grass and put in um, kind of all these low water succulents. Not sure if that's a change for the California drought right now, but... Either way, it does look pretty good. It matches a lot of the aesthetic that's going on in Tomorrowland. And if this is kind of a stopgap until they can do the new entrance, maybe that's, uh, you know, it's better than what it was before, which is just plain grass. And they actually replicated over on this side, but here's a look at the entrance. So you can see, we got teased this a long time ago. There's the new entrance and each of these planters that we're standing by, we're supposed to get reworked to kind of match that retro futuristic architecture that they were going for at Tomorrowland and they just never redid it, so. But for right now, this it looks like this is their stopgap kind of in between until maybe we find out some more details over at D23 Expo. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. All right, so for those of you that have seen uh, the new Buzz Lightyear movie from Disney Pixar, they actually have a meet and greet for him over here at Hyperspace Mountain. You can see the sign right there, Disney Pixar Lightyear photo opportunity straight ahead. And it's actually taking uh, the space of the former FastPass distribution for Space Mountain. And they actually have little indicators on the ground so you know where to get in queue for it. So we're headed that way right now. All right. Okay, so the meet and greet's actually just to the right of the main entrance of Space Mountain. So it's gonna be in the former Fast Pass distribution area. He was actually greeting on the first day over at Tomorrowland Terrace, but he's over here right now in this special space that they made for him in the old distribution area. You can see you got socks kind of hidden behind this person over here. So we'll be up there in just a moment. Can we get a two infinity? <laughs> you ready? Yep. To infinity and beyond. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> so I headed over to New Orleans Square and actually caught the Columbia getting ready to dock again, preparing for Fantasmic. So I was kind of hoping to get on it, but I didn't come over here in time. Was lagging over at Disney California Adventure and some other places, but we'll have to ride it next time but I wanted to come over here and check out any potential construction going on by Tarzan's Treehouse again, and also go in through New Orleans Square, show you guys what Pieces of Eight looks like, because I know that store reopened more recently, um, but people were asking what it looked like on the inside and if anything had changed, so we're gonna check that out next. All right, so we are checking out the construction over here at Tarzan's Treehouse, and um, I wanted to show you on this side. So this could potentially maybe be an entrance for the attraction now that it doesn't have its former entrance in the middle of the pathway. Uh, we've showed you this before. Um, this is all, this all used to be kind of like a play area on the bottom level of the treehouse that was representative of the camp where kind of all the gorillas make the music and all that kind of stuff. Um, but now this could potentially, also Tarzan too would do a meet and greet up here sometimes. But this could potentially be uh, the entrance kind of reworked into this particular area. I still have a theory too that you can actually enter through the main parts of the Caribbean queue and then you'll come up here and enter for the treehouse because whatever they put in for this treehouse, I feel like it's gonna be pretty popular and they're gonna need to have queue space. And really, if they're just utilizing this over here, there's not a lot of space. And with the fact that Indiana Jones queue multiple times throughout the day will bleed out over here for Lightning Lane, just means that they're gonna need some additional space. So if they both entered through the main entrance of Pirates of the Caribbean, it might make sense. I don't know if you guys know about this little fun hidden pirate thing you can do over here, but you actually don't have to pay for it. It's all part of the Disney Play app. So right over here outside 21 Royal, if you head in, which is kind of in between the two gift shops, they actually have Fortune Teller Red. It's one of the pirate fortune tellers over here. And you actually don't have to pay the 25 cents. If you have the Disney Parks Play app, you just pull it up, you find the fortune teller red option, and then you're gonna go ahead and hit start. Let them know that you're here and you're standing near the app. You're gonna pick one of the cards that you'd like, and then it's gonna send it on up to red.
and then he's going to give you your fortune teller card. He actually lights up the map, says your fortune waits below. There it is. You can actually see here, it has a little bit of a story about the Jolly Roger. And then if you flip it over, it has your fortune of the day and then the first chapter. Now, the fun thing about these is each time you come and do this, you get a different chapter of the stories that he provides. So you can put all the chapters together and get the full story if you come and collect it every single time you visit Disneyland. So it's a fun little thing to do, especially if you're a magic key holder and want to just come redo some stuff. But check that out. It's going to be over here just outside the Pieces at 8 shop and um, the Bats Le Baton Rouge store. Uh, over in New Orleans Square. So that area just in between the two shops. All right, so the Pieces of Eight store just reopened recently. So let's check out what it looks like on the inside. Not too much has changed actually, but they do have a good selection of new merchandise. Some familiar stuff. And of course, all the pirate stuff people come over here for. And of course, the penny press machine over here and actually the unique thing about this collectible medallions machine is it's not a normal penny press you actually get pirate treasure or pirate gold stamped with a different insignias on it you can get one for five dollars or four for fifteen dollars and there's the four designs so it's kind of a different unique collectible that's exclusive to this pieces of eight store um, that's different than just getting like a penny press all right, so I wanted to show you guys over here in Disney California Adventure, next to Seaside Souvenirs, they've actually opened the Paradise Pier entrance, which we've been talking about uh, the last couple updates, but we're actually going to try to see if we can go through it. I know that they'll usually let guests only walk into it if they have a hotel key, um, just to kind of keep it exclusive, but when you're leaving, it kind of doesn't really matter because you're just exiting the park. So we're going to go see if we can try to do it. So we actually just walk out the park. And then you head up this way, which is where that new backstage kind of barrier has been put up. And then we're going to walk along the backstage pathway over here out to Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel. And this is actually just outside the villas over here at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. Um, so you're actually walking along the first floor villas as, and also the barbecue area for villas, uh, which is over here on the right hand side. This place was normally dead. Like you could kind of walk out here whenever you wanted if you were kind of just exploring when you were staying at the Grand Californian. But now it's an exit for hotel guests. So you'll continue walking out here and you'll head straight across the way and it'll dump you out right in front of Disney's Paradise Pier Hotel. And if you're coming in this way, you can see now right up close, this is the direction it would take you to go back into the park. You head this way here and they're gonna actually verify it with a room key. So um, we did walk out as non-hotel guests because uh, we're headed over to the parking structure. So this is actually a really great shortcut. If you guys wanna head on over this direction out to um, the street and then cross on over the bridge to uh, Mickey and Friends parking structure. So. A good shortcut if you don't want to walk all the way through the Esplanade and downtown Disney. So definitely try it next time. And if you're staying at the hotel, even better. All right, so that does it for today's quick update video. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit what was going on, what's new, what's happening. I'm glad we finally got to go through the Paradise Pier new entrance over at Disney California Adventure Park. And if you guys have an opportunity to take that, definitely do. It's going to cut your walk time in half back to the structure. Uh, of course, follow all the rules. The cast members tell you at some point that you can't use that entrance and it's just for hotel guests and you're gonna have to pay attention to that. Of course, uh, we let them know that we were leaving the park and that we weren't with the hotel and they let us walk right on through. Uh, so always follow the rules with regards to that. But if you like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button. And if you didn't already, please leave a comment below and we'll see you real soon.